Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelson. Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. They like to go places, enjoy happy times together. And like most of us, they enjoy these moments over again in pictures. Often they send snapshots to their friends. That's an idea you can follow. With every letter you write, why not send along two or three recent pictures? What better way to keep your family close together, even when you're miles apart? They're the next best thing to a personal visit. To keep your family news up to date, why not take some pictures this weekend? Make a note right now to pick up a roll or two of dependable Kodak film. The film in the familiar yellow box. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy The Adventures of Ozzy and Harry. Cantini is down. Cantini is down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's all over, and Lopez wins it by a knockout. How about that left hook? I thought it was your right cross. No, it was the left hook right on the inside there. That was one of the most beautiful right crosses we've seen in a long time. <laughs> it's funny, sometimes you can see the punches better on television than they can at their inside. What'd you turn it off for? Well, the fight's over, and I've seen that right fielder shaving in the locker room lots of times. <laughs> Isn't there an old movie coming on? Oh, not for about five minutes. Besides, Dave's doing his homework. I don't want to disturb him. Oh, that's all right, Pop. I study much better with the television set on. Well, a leading psychologists don't seem to agree with you on that, Dave. Well, that makes us even. I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff. <laughs> I found the book upstairs, David. Oh, thanks. I need it for about five or ten minutes first. What are you reading there? Romeo and Juliet. Oh, by Shakespeare. Well, how'd you know, Ma? <laughs> Just call it a wild guess. <laughs> You're not going to be able to read Romeo and Juliet in five or ten minutes. You better. I have to read War and Peace and Return of the Native tonight. <laughs> Are you kidding, Dave? It'll take you two weeks to read War and Peace alone. No, it won't, Pop. That's what this book is for. It's got synopses of all the classics. <laughs> now, wait a minute. That's no way to read books. Sure it is. Think of all the time it saves. Well, yeah, but the whole idea of reading the classics is, is, is to... Be able to say you've read the classics? <laughs> Well, yes, I guess that is part of it. But mainly, it's to get the full value and meaning out of the author's writing. Think of all the enjoyment you miss by not reading the entire book. Think of all the enjoyment you miss by reading it. Your favorite television programs, dates with girls. <laughs> well, you can read books and go out with girls, too. By the time I was your age, I'd read practically all the classics, and I still had lots of time to go out with girls. Name a few. Oh, well, there was Beverly, Norma, Helen. No, I don't mean the girls. I mean the book. Oh. <laughs> well, let's see. There was Silas Marner, A Tale of Two Cities. Who was Beverly? <laughs> yes, I don't think I've heard you mention her before. Uh, oh, uh, Beverly. Oh, uh, she was a girl who loaned me the copy of Silas Marner. That was quit thinking. <laughs> well, that's what reading teaches you. <laughs> Look, uh, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with television and movies and all, but I don't think we should give up reading, especially the classics. What's so good about that old stuff? Aren't they writing better books today? Well, uh, in many cases, yes. But it's part of your cultural background to read the classics. It gives you a basis of comparison, an introduction to literary form and style. I must admit, I haven't read any books lately. There's so darn much going on all the time. Well, don't you miss those quiet evenings we used to have? When was that? When the boys were real small. You used to do a lot of knitting then. We'd sit around, a, a fire in the fireplace. The boys would be doing their homework. Yeah, I remember I, I reread a lot of the old classics. Well, why don't you light a fire now? I'll get some yarn, and the boys can go on with their study, and you can find a book to read. Well, you know something? That's not a bad idea. I know just the book I want to read again, too, The House of the Seven Gables. Really enjoyed that years ago. I don't think we have a copy of it, do we? Well, it must be around here someplace. I know I've read it at least three times. 
Then what do you want to read it again for, Pop? Well, see, that's one of the things about a really good book. You can read it over and over again, get something new out of it every time. I don't think I've ever seen that around here. Well, maybe you gave it away. Well, who would I give it to? Maybe you gave it to Beverly. Here, you've still got her copy of Silas Marner. Oh. <laughs> How about this? This is a wonderful old book. Silas Marner. Must have read this one about 12 times. Uh, do we have a letter opener around here? Yeah, I'll get it for you. I have to get my knitting anyway. Yeah, it's a fine old book. Oh, thank you, dear. I thought you said you read that about 12 times. <laughs> oh, I... The pages got stuck together. Look, I don't want to be selfish about this. What do you mean? Well, I don't want to reorganize the whole family. Oh, don't be silly, dear. Well, yeah, but pretty soon I'll come across some funny passage in here and I'll start to chuckle and you'll want to know what it is. I just think it might be distracting to you and the boys. If you can find anything to laugh at in Silas Marner, you go ahead and laugh, Pa. <laughs> oh, I don't want to interrupt your mother while she's watching television. Well, if I want to watch television, I'll go back in the den. Come on, stop kidding, Harriet. Put down your knitting and come on into the den. But I don't want to watch television. You said at dinner time there's an old movie you wanted to see. What movie was that? Well, I don't know. It was one of the old... Old classics? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess you would call it that. Did I leave my book in here? Oh, shh. Your mother wants to see this picture. <laughs> oh, good morning, dear. Good morning. I just have time for orange juice and coffee. You're a little late, aren't you, Pop? Yeah, I overslept. Well, no wonder you didn't come up to bed until 2 o'clock. How far did you get? Oh, uh, I saw both pictures. The pictures? I thought you were going to read Silas Marner. Well, no, your mother wanted to see these old movies on television. Well, I just wanted to see the first one, then I went to bed. You didn't get any reading done, huh? Well, not last night. I'm going to read tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. It's probably our fault. I guess it was hard for you to concentrate with all of us downstairs together. <laughs> well, don't be silly. After all, the, the den isn't my private reading room. It belongs to all of us. Well, maybe you'll have better luck with Silas Marner tonight. Oh, I, I may not read Silas Marner. You know, it's a good book, The House of Seven Gables. I always liked that when I was in school. I may read that again. Well, I think you can pick up a copy at the library, Pop. Well, uh, yeah, I may do that on my way home tonight. Do you want me to do it? No, thanks, Dave. I can do it. Sorry, I better run. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Uh, do you guys want me to get you anything down there? Yeah, see if you can get the librarian's phone number. She's a pretty cute-looking girl. <laughs> I'd like to have a copy of The House of Seven Gables. Did you have it? Yes, we do. It's right over here. I'll get it for you. Oh, thank you very much. These old classics sure make wonderful reading. Yes, they do. I have a copy of that someplace, and I, I guess maybe I, I loaned to somebody and it was never returned. It happens all the time. My mother was saying just this morning she loaned someone a copy of Silas Marnie years ago, and it was never returned. What's your mother's name? Dorothy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, for goodness sakes. Oh, hi, Ola. Charlie, say, I haven't seen you for ages. Well, how have you been? Well, fine, thanks. I wonder what happened to you. I haven't seen you at the lodge or at the golf course. Oh, well, I gave up golf about a year ago. It got to be a little too much for me. You know, all that walking and the climbing hills. <laughs> When a fella gets to be our age, Oz, he's got to watch himself. Oh, yeah. Of course, I think you've got a couple of years on me. Well, maybe one or two, but let's face it, Oz, we're not kids anymore. We've <laughs> both got sons that are grown up, practically men. You know, the way I see it, the thing for us to do is to accept it gracefully, 
sit back and enjoy the quiet things of life. Like, I like reading the classics. What have you got there, Oz? Oh, uh, The House of the Seven Gables. Oh, that's a fine book. Yeah, of course, I've read it before. Yeah, well, I've read this one before, too, several times, as a matter of fact. You know, I guess when you get to be our age, it's fun to go back and reread some of the things you read when you were younger. That's one of the signs, Oz. Signs of what? Well, you know, a sign that you're ready to settle down and grow old without too much of a struggle. <laughs> well, uh, frankly, uh, I don't exactly like the idea of growing old. Uh, not just yet, at least. Well, it took me a little time to adjust to it, too. It came as quite a shock to me when I realized my kids didn't need me anymore. They, they had outside interests and... Uh, oh, well, I still have quite a bit in common with Dave and Rick. Not like you used to. You don't go out and play basketball and football with them anymore, do you? <laughs> well, no, they're, they're a little too rough for me these days. Uh, well, a few years ago, they weren't. See, those are the indications you have to watch. You'll find your wife's attitude changed a little, too. Has she, uh, has she joined a women's club? Oh, yeah, she joined about six months ago. So has my wife. I guess you, you can't blame them for wanting to get away from us every now and then. After all, I guess they get tired of looking at the same old face for 33 years. Well, of course, we've only been married for 21 years. Oh, well, that's a couple of years. No, no, don't get me wrong, Oz. I'm not sore or anything. As a matter of fact, I think my family's been very nice to me. Do you know what they did? No. Well, they built me a nice little reading room out over the garage, and the wife put up curtains, and they got me a comfortable chair. I can go off by myself and not be in anybody's way. Well, I'm sure you're not in anybody's way, Charlie. Oh, I took the hint. It's not bad. You get used to being a hermit. Say, what time is it? Oh, it's only five o'clock. I guess I'd better be going. Are you coming along, too? No, I'd rather take one of my pills. Well, it's nice to see you, Charlie. I'll probably run into you at the golf. Uh, at the... I, I, I may bump into you here at the library yeah, again. It's nice to see you, Art. A greeting is that? When we were first married, you used to rush up to the door, throw your arms around me, and give me a great big hug and kiss. Well, when we were first married, you used to bring home candy and flowers and things. What have you got there? A house of seven gables. Hello, dear. <laughs> Aren't you even going to ask where I've been? I know where you've been, down to the library. Did you have fun? Well, you know, it wasn't too exciting. Oh, I bumped into an old friend of mine, Charlie Johnson. Oh, that's nice. Well, yes and no. In a way, I I'm kind of sorry I met him. His family seems to have lost interest in the poor guy. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, he tried to be philosophical about it, but he wasn't kidding me any. What do you mean? Well, 
They've practically pushed him out of his own house. Uh, do you know what they've done? No, what? Oh, hi, Pa. Hi, Pa. Oh, hi, boys. You're just in time. Uh, I was just telling your mother, or, or rather, I, I was leading up to it, I, I just want you to know how grateful I am that you're so considerate of me, and you always include me in all your plans. Oh, somebody told you. Told me what? About the surprise. I didn't tell him. Oh, I didn't either. Oh, good. No, no way. <laughs> what surprise is this? Is everything set? Well, yeah. <laughs> Come on, if there's a surprise for me, let me in on it. All right, come on, follow us. Mysterious. Are you with me? Oh, yeah, I'm right behind you. Where is this, up in the bedroom? Well, come on, Mom. Well, just a second now. Here, we have to blindfold you. I'll do it. <laughs> Are we expecting a celebrity guest here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on now, straight ahead. Going to the attic? It's getting warm, Pop. Okay, boys. Take off your blindfold. Surprise! Well, what's this? It's your new reading room, dear. Your own private little hideaway, and we promise nobody's gonna come up here and bother you. How do you like it, Pop? Oh, it's, it's, it's fine. Are the curtains nice? How do you like this big chair, Pop? I carried it all the way up here myself. Oh, well... I, I don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything. Just sit down here and enjoy yourself. There. I'll call you when dinner's ready. Come on, boys. Pretty funny. You don't disturb your father. He came here us up in the attic. You think Pop would like to see this? Oh, I'm sure if he wanted to, he'd come down and join us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that was a pretty funny picture. It's too bad Pop didn't see it. Oh, he's probably enjoying himself. Well, you guys had better go upstairs and finish your homework. Okay, Mom. Come on, Rick. Hey, Pop. Oh. Hi, Rick. <laughs> go on upstairs and do your homework, son. I didn't know you were down oh. here, dear. Oh, yeah, I was just uh, resting my eyes a little here. I, I came down to get the saw. I thought you were up in your room reading. Well, I, I, I was, but I noticed that the... The leg on the end table was a little short, and I came down to get the saw to fix it. Oh, I'll fix it for you, Pop. No, Bob. no, don't, don't worry about it, Dave. Go on up and finish your homework, son. Well, the least we can do is fix up the room so you can read there. Oh, no, honestly, I'm fine, Harriet. Oh, that's a shame. I'll bet we had this television set turned up too loud. No, no, when I'm up there with the door closed in the attic, you can't hear a thing. We should have fixed up a room in the garage for No, no. <laughs> Comfortable, Harry. Uh, don't do any more for me. Oh, here, 
dear, I'll take those. You go on upstairs to your room. No, I can help you. The boys have their homework to do. No school tomorrow, Pop. Oh, well, don't turn the television set on too loud now. We'll close the door. Oh, really, dear, I'll take them. Harriet, I want to help you. Oh, you go on upstairs to your room and read. <laughs> Used to being a hermit. Used to being a hermit. Being a hermit. for a drive with the kids and we thought we'd drop in and see you. The kids will bring them in. Come on in, kids. Well, hello, children. Oh, well, thank you. Just throw them in the pile there. Are you all right here? You comfortable? Oh, yes. I like being by myself. See, he's a new one, isn't he? No, he was here last year. He's a fine-looking boy. Well, we'll see you in a couple of months. Oh, by the way, Mom sends her love. Why didn't your mother come along? Well, there was a good movie on television tonight, and she didn't want to miss it. <laughs> Bye, Dad. Say goodbye to your grandpa. Bye, Bye children. disturb you. You're reading? No, th that's okay, son. It's pretty nice in here. Oh, yeah, it's, it's very comfortable. Uh, you want me to help you with your homework or something? No, I, I got my record player out here. I bought a couple new records. I thought you might like to hear them. Oh, yeah, bring them right in. Uh, where are the records? They're right in here. Come on now, Rick. You know what Mom said about disturbing Pop. Oh, that's okay, Dave. Come on in, son. Look what I got here for you. Oh, boy, a television set. Hey, that's great. I thought you might want to watch some program. <laughs> Look, uh, Dave, uh, I'm afraid you've all got the wrong idea. I don't like to do these things by myself. What's going on up here, party? Oh, come on in, dear. I was afraid you might get hungry. <laughs> hey, they look wonderful. Cut that out. How can your father read with that going on? But, Harriet, I like a lot of noise and excitement. Turn it down a little, will you, Rick? There's a good program coming on. I brought some coffee and some homemade cake, too. How oh, was it? It's a regular surprise party. Well, we missed you, dear. We had to find some excuse. Well, uh, let me make an announcement. Now, this is a wonderful little room. It's nice and cozy and comfortable. But let's not call it my room, huh? It gets too darn lonesome up here. <laughs> What'd you say, Pop? Uh... Well, uh, let's all uh, dig in. This is really living. <laughs>
Ozzie and Harriet are brought to you on film by Eastman Kodak Company, whose complete line of cameras, projectors, and film is designed to meet every picture-taking need. Remember, if it's made by Kodak, you know it's good. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.